Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and the CW just screened the Flash pilot at Comic-Con, legally. I'm gonna do non-spoilers first, then for everyone who has seen it, I will do a spoiler section with a special warning. Hello to any new people. If you're just finding me for the first time, I do Arrow and Flash videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm even doing special Comic-Con giveaways, and I'm gonna be uploading the panel, so I'll explain that at the end of the video. So Flash review first. I feel like because of what this show is, the cast they picked and the creative team behind it, the trailers they posted tell you everything you need to know up front. So actually watching the episode for the first time doesn't reveal anything that Arrow fans or comic book readers didn't already know. It's through and through all the best stuff from Arrow, but done in the light of day with a lot more humor. That's just because Barry Allen is a much more positive person than Oliver Queen. And if you did see those episodes of Arrow with Grant Gustin, his performance of Barry is virtually unchanged. They haven't messed with the character or anything. It's a direct continuation and because so much time has passed, they do deal with those gaps in time in very creative ways. If you have not seen Arrow at all, I'll just say that Grant Gustin has the perfect energy for a character like Barry Allen. He's this hyper curious best friend type that makes you feel like he will definitely be on the Justice League someday. This show is all about his origin story, so just give him a few years and pretty soon he'll be running laps around Superman. And just to clarify, I'm not talking about Grant Gustin being on the Justice League movie, I'm talking about the comic book version of The Flash joining the Justice League. He's an A-list member, you know, top tier level powers. For instance, whenever he's able to draw enough energy from the Speed Force, he can travel through time. Time travel powers combined with the ability to outrun Superman automatically make you an A-list superhero. The Flash we meet in the first episode is just starting to figure things out and put his own version of Team Arrow together. I guess we can just go ahead and call them Team Flash, but all the supporting characters are great. That also includes Detective Pretty Boy, played by Rick Kuznet. I feel like because his name is Edward Thawne, everyone's going to go into the episode with certain expectations and still come out surprised. They definitely had a big wink to the camera from the Thawne character in reference to like a speed easter egg, but even knowing everything I did about the Thawne character and the zooms, I was still pretty blown away by a couple left turns. Team Flash, or what initially forms as Barry's support circle, are already characters that you've met for the most part, especially if you watched Arrow. Tom Cavanaugh's Harrison Wells is the person who runs Star Labs. He's kind of like a parental father figure type. Well, not really a father figure, but he's a little too old to be one of their peers. He feels more like a Slade Wilson from Arrow Season 1, only in that he's a mentor, not like the Deathstroke version of that character. The way they form that team is really interesting, and there are definitely a lot of comic book easter eggs. I think that they said that this is the most faithful comic book adaptation of a TV show that they've done so far, way more faithful than Arrow was in Season 1. The villain that they use to call Barry to action is someone you guys will really enjoy. The way they integrate the particle accelerator explosion and all the superpowers that are going to be happening on the show, it totally worked for me. And visually, it also looked really awesome. The big concern with a show like this is when it makes a lot of promises in terms of showing off superpowers, it can get really expensive. Like during the Smallville era, it would have cost 10 times as much, but it's starting to get a lot cheaper, so expect to see lots of really cool superpowers. Just based on the strength of this episode, I definitely think we're going to get a season 2. They're not going to make an announcement about that anytime soon, probably not till after the first couple of episodes air, but I definitely think it's going to happen. This is actually one of the strongest new shows that the CW has. They've already announced several additional comic book characters coming on the show like Robbie Mel as Firestorm and now the Plastique character. Obviously that's a villain. If you remember, Arrow took it pretty easy on the comic book stuff whenever it first started. The Flash on the other hand is just diving right into the comic book stuff and that includes Arrow crossovers. Right now the mid-season finale of both shows is going to be a two-hour crossover event. Like the first half of that mid-season finale is going to be a crossover between two shows in both those shows. And then the second half is just going to be the each individual show wrapping up that plot line. That just gets me so excited for both those shows this fall. And yes, I'm going to be doing weekly videos for The Flash and Arrow. So now I'm going to talk about some of my specific favorite moments, so careful for spoilers if you don't want to know anything. I'll wait just a second. Okay, ready? Everybody, here we go. Amongst many favorites, I think my biggest moment of joy was the Harrison Wells reveal at the end. Right off the bat, I'll say I'm thinking the show is going to use him as a Flash. Grant Gustin, of course, being the normal Barry Allen Flash, Edward Thawne being another version of the Flash. So we'll have multiple Flashes. Not all of them will be heroes. Some will be villains. Here's the thing. If they're taking a lot of plot cues from Flash Rebirth, think about how Jeff Johns made the transition from Aobard Thawne, Professor Zoom, to the next one, Hunter Zolomon. So, let's talk about Harrison Wells. There's a couple different Flashes that he could be. I think he's either going to be the rival inhabiting the body of Max Mercury, he has the ability to time travel via the Speed Force, which explains the newspaper from the future, or he's Aobard Thon, the true Professor Zoom. Regardless of which Flash he is, I think that Edward Thon, Detective Pretty Boy, is going to become the Hunter Zolomon Zoom. 
They're just gonna give him Hunter Zolomon's story and he's gonna be named Edward Thawne. And something really interesting about the Gorilla Grodd Easter egg, I know everyone got really excited about that. The producer said that they had to really fight to keep it in the pilot. Really, the network was gonna take it out and they had to demand that it stayed just to give us that WTF awesome moment. I don't think we're gonna see any Grodd stuff this season, but he could totally be here in season two. Think of it as like a Dawn of the Planet of the Apes situation, whereby, you know, apes gain intelligence via this particle accelerator explosion. As for Team Flash, now that we know that Robbie Mel is playing Caitlin Snow's supposed dead fiance, Ronnie Raymond, aka Firestorm, I'm wondering if they're still gonna drive her to the dark side, like her comic book persona, Killer Frost. Something huge would have to happen between her and Firestorm for her to completely leave the team. Robbie Mel's character is debuting in the fourth episode, and yes, they are doing the Martin Stein thing. He's gonna be a character on the show that we'll meet eventually. No word on what that Firestorm costume is gonna look like. They might reveal it at Comic Con. If they do, I'll include it in one of my videos, but expect it to look like a modified version of the one in the comics, just like Grant Gustin's Flash costume. They'll probably dig some Star Labs tech out to help contain his Firestorm powers whenever he activates them. So now let's talk about that newspaper everyone was freaking out about at the end. I think that is going to inform the major arc of season one. Eventually, Team Flash is gonna learn what's going on with Harrison Wells, the time travel stuff, and what he's trying to do, and then deal with it. So here's my crackpot theory about that newspaper. So in it, it says Flash disappears. What if Harrison Wells is the Flash that disappeared and he just disappeared to the past? The reason I don't think that's the case is because Harrison Wells had worked at Star Labs for a long time as like a brilliant particle physicist and Barry Allen, as smart as he is, is not a particle physicist. Harrison Wells has to be someone else, but I do think that he's trying to affect a future outcome by changing the past. All Flash stories become time travel stories at a certain point. But let me know what your favorite moment was in the comments below, or if you haven't seen it yet, just let me know what you're looking forward to. And here's the details on all the Comic-Con stuff that's happening in the panels and my giveaways. So The Flash is not doing a separate panel on its own. Saturday night in Hall H, Stephen Amell is doing a super mega DC TV show panel. That includes the cast of The Flash, Gotham, Constantine, and of course Arrow. Arrow's also doing its separate own panel on Friday. I will be recording both of those and posting footage, so be sure to subscribe to get all that stuff. Because Marvel's panel is also on Saturday night, I'll be uploading that first just because it's winning my straw poll. But I should have Flash and Arrow stuff uploaded by midnight Saturday. I'll also be live tweeting during those. If you want to follow me on social, there are links for that at the bottom of the description. And yes, I will be posting reviews for Constantine Episode 1 and Gotham Episode 1 this weekend. My Flash and Arrow giveaways are pretty simple. I'm giving away Funko Pop, Arrow, and Flash figures. I'll pick two random people from the comments next week. All you have to do to participate is be a subscriber and leave a comment on this video. So I'm going to be posting a whole lot of Comic-Con videos this weekend. I'm going to be adding them to a special Comic-Con playlist on my channel. You can click here to watch the first one. It's my Marvel Universe Comic-Con preview. And you can click here to learn all about Robbie Mills' Firestorm character on The Flash. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys this weekend. High fives.